I'll scroll away from Matthew with his legs up the wall. So when you come into this position, the key is um, that you want to feel as though you're resting on the flats of the shoulder blades. And I want you to open your arms out as wide as you've got space to do so. Resting the backs of the hands on the floor, softening the fingers, and letting the weight of your arms, almost like pull the weight of your shoulders back towards the mat. You want to feel the whole of your upper body sink a little more deeply into the floor beneath you. Starting with the space at the back of the head, perhaps nodding the chin closer to the chest for comfort in the neck. And then allowing the wide muscles of the back to soften and release so that you can ease the spine towards the floor. So we know that we have that natural lift in the lower back and it's not uncommon to hold a little bit of tension, a little bit of discomfort here in this lift in the lower back. So if you've chosen to place a cushion or a pillow under this space, it just helps us to naturally follow that curve of the spine. It also makes sure that we don't feel too much tension at the back of the legs. And if there's room to do so on your door, you can perhaps take the feet a little bit wider. Sometimes it feels quite nice to just get that space through the legs. It's almost as though the weight of your legs pushes into that space at the back of the sacrum and it encourages more of a widening and a softening here. So soften the tongue. Relax the muscles around the mouth. Unclench the jaw. Soften the muscles in the temples, between the eyebrows, and bring your focus to the breath. Start by focusing on the breath at the tip of the nose, and then start to follow the breath along the nasal passages. Tune in with the sensations of the breath. The cool air on the breath in. The warm air on the breath out. And as you feel the breath move over the tongue, over the throat center, encourage the muscles here to release and relax. Feel that steady flow of the breath gently filling the top third of the lungs, noticing an expansion and a widening through the collarbones. And as you deepen the inhalation, as you slow the breath down, start to feel that expansion through the back of the shoulder blades, across the chest, into the side of the ribcage. Feel the breath all the way down to the base of the lungs. Inhaling to fill the lungs completely. A steady exhalation to empty the lungs fully. So maintain your focus on the breath. This natural steady rhythm, equal length to the inhale and the exhale. So it's not unusual in this posture to start to feel the back of the legs become tired, to perhaps feel pins and needles sensations in the feet. So keep moving the toes if you need to. And if it becomes unbearable, then simply bend the knees and slide the feet a little lower down the door or the wall. And then without distraction, return your focus once more to the breath. Visualize that every breath is expanding the heart center. 
Inhaling deeply, pushing out any anxiety, any tension as you exhale fully. Acknowledge that the arms, the hands, all the way down to the tips of the fingers are an extension of your heart. So channel the breath all the way down to the fingers. Feel the breath in the palms of the hands. Feel the breath as a warmth, as an energy here. Now let's visualize sending the breath a little lower, perhaps to that area in the lower back where we're finding release. Visualizing an expansion at the back of the hips. And again, noticing that weight of the legs, pressing the back of the hips into the floor. On your next deep inhalation, Visualize sending the breath all the way down to the soles of the feet. Exhale to release any tension, any fatigue. And send the breath through the full length of your body. Energizing your body. Bringing your body and your breath into balance. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling fully. Now we need to check in with those legs again. I mentioned earlier about that pins and needles sensation. So let's start to return sensation to the body. Wiggling the fingers wiggling the toes. If you did um, choose to widen the feet, perhaps draw the feet a little closer together, then bend the knees and just slide the feet down the side of the wall or the door. So be mindful of the space that surrounds you. In an ideal world, we want to roll to our left hand side, but it might be more space on your right. So plan your route and gently take yourself over to one side. Then when you're ready, return to a comfortable seated position. Keep hold of your pillow if you like. I might have done quite a nice job there. I'm going to use my pillow underneath my sit bones tonight just to give me a little bit of um, release for the lower back. And you might feel a little bit floaty. I'm conscious that we've been upside down. It's lovely because actually I can see on your cheeks in the, in the screen that you're all a little bit rosier. So we maybe needed that little bit of oxygenated blood. So can we start with the feet together in a Baddha So we're just allowing the knees to widen, gravity to draw the knees apart. And just to find a little release in the inner thighs. Inhale to lift and lengthen. Then extend your arms forward from the shoulder height. Bring the palms together, place right forefinger over left. As you come to an interlock, open the palms, exhale to engage the core, then curve the spine towards the back of the room. As you nod the chin to the chest, perhaps squeeze the knees a little wider apart. Then inhale to lift, turn the hands inside out, and lift the arms overhead again. Ears between the upper arms, Shoulders relax down away from the ears. Just finding a little space in the side of the body. Become really congested here. As you exhale, engage the core and slide the hands back to chest level. Turn the hands inside out. 
Bring both hands behind. Let's have left forefinger over right, shoulder blades drawn together. And remember that key of not pressing the chin forward. So keep the chin drawn in, engage the core, and slide the hands away from the lower back. Good. Let's just gently nod the chin now towards the chest. Any little creaks and groans in the neck are good. And return the hands to the lower back. Exhale, engage the core. Inhale, separate the hands. Bring them to rest on the inner thighs and lift your gaze back to the front of the room. Squeeze both shoulders up towards the ears. As you exhale, just shrug the shoulders go. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders up. This time on the exhale, roll the shoulders back and down. So gentle circles, squeezing the shoulders up on the inhale, back and down on the exhale. Lift again out of the sit bones. On the next out breath, just gently turn the head over the right shoulder. Follow the nose rather than the chin to return to center. Then turn the head over the other shoulder. Inhale again to return to center. Then exhale, just gently nod the chin towards the chest. Lift the gaze again towards center. And just to let the inner thighs relax a little, let's come out of that posture, come into leg cross. I think some of you already have. I forget that it's quite an intense posture to hold. <laughs> So let's bring the right hand over to the left shoulder, the left hand to the right shoulder, and give yourself a hug. Take a deep breath in and feel that expansion through the back of the rib cage. Then as you exhale, a big noisy breath out. <sighs> Inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Exhale, a big noisy breath as we bring the palms together. <sighs> opposite hand to opposite shoulder, big breath in. Exhale, noisy breath out. <sighs> Separate the hands. And we'll change the leg crossover. So opposite foot in front or behind. Reposition the hands either side of the hips. So remember that I've stayed seated on my pillow, so my fingertips don't quite get to the floor. Extend the right arm away, lift and lengthen through the left. Bring that right shoulder in towards the waist, press through the fingertips. So we want to create a diagonal line from the tip of the left finger all the way down to the opposite knee. Inhale to lift, come back to center. Let's open wide to the opposite side. Use that left elbow in towards the body, just to hold gentle comfort here. Then inhale, lift and come back to center. Left hand to right knee, right hand behind the hip. Again, fingertips if you're on the pillow. Lift out of the sit bones and follow the rib cage to come into a curve of a Twist on this side. Inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Palms together. One of those big noisy exhales again. Opposite hand to opposite knee. <sighs> Inhale to lift up. Exhale, squeeze into the twist on this side. Inhale again to return to centre. Lovely. So we're going to keep hold of the pillow that we had before and we're going to do a couple of restorative postures tonight. So I'm going to use a bolster because it's a very good shape and the first restorative pose we're going to do this evening is one that you'll all recognize. It's a variation of child's pose and we're just going to take the pillow along the mat. We're going to position the knees just to the front of that bolster or pillow so don't worry about bringing the sit bones all the way back to the heels. It's not really the name of the game here. We're going to bring the arms forward and let the forehead come to rest 
on the bolster. Elbows bent. And just feel that little bit of space start to open out through the shoulder blades, through the middle back. So we're quite upper body for this first part of the posture. So you'd be pleased to know that these restorative postures, we don't move quickly. We hold onto the space and we just find our breath in these postures. So the intention is to expand and widen, let the weight of your body release to the floor. Now, in order to let your body become heavier, you might feel more inclined to start pushing the sit bones back to the heels, to start lengthening through the spine. And just sneaking a little more space now into the lower back. Gently letting go of tension here. Keeping the forehead nodded towards the pillow rather than lifting the head up, which has a tendency to put tension on the back of the neck. Then push down into the palms of the hands, into the forearms, and gently bring yourself back to a seated, uh, sorry, an all fours position. Now I'm going to bring the knees now either side of the pillow or either side of the bolster. So we're now going to use the bolster almost to sit upon. Again, we'll extend the arms forward. We'll keep the elbows um, bent. I quite like to bring my forehead to rest on the backs of the hands. And this will feel different again. We're getting, allowing more space across the sacrum. We opened out the inner thighs when we did that Vadakanasana to begin with. And we're just allowing our breath to again bring us heavier, more release towards the floor. So let's find our way back to deep yogic breath here. So inhaling to the belly, the chest and the collarbones. Exhaling from the collarbones, the chest and the belly lines. We can bring in that ujjaya breath, that noisy breath that we've been playing around with tonight. Inhaling deeply to the belly, the chest and the collarbones. Then on an exhale, inhale. Now let your breath return to a natural rhythm. My ears are becoming warm, so they must be energizing something. Then push down into the palms of the hands. And again, just bring the knees a little further forward. So we're going to bring the knees all the way towards the end of the bolster or the pillow. Nice. And then we're just going to park the bottom back. <laughs> What's that bad on the there the ankles? Yeah, yeah. So remain lifted out of the sit bones. Now this is one that I quite often do in class, but we very rarely have um, the prop of a bolster here. So go to with what's your own natural um, space within this. So we'll start by extending the hands back and just start by easing onto the palms. So it's not a big movement. We're just gently opening the thighs and coming a little bit into the hip flexors. So the last thing we want to do is hold on to the lower back and crunch in this position. So try if you can not to kind of resist here in the lower back. I think it helps to push the shins to the floor 
to gently lift the thighs and to visualize lifting the sternum up towards the ceiling. It just magically frees all of that space through the chest. Now, for some of you, this will be far enough. So if you're in this posture and this feels like this is enough for you, pause here. If you feel you can come a little lower, the idea is to come down onto the elbows. And again, it really helps to keep the hips and the chest lifted. What becomes harder in this position is that the weight of your head is pulling you back. So obviously think more about lifting the chest. It's also very difficult to talk when you're lying back. <laughs> so that's why I'm lifting up. Keep the shoulder blades drawn together, pressing into the shins, lifting the thighs, lifting the belly, lifting the chest. And when you're ready, exhale, engage the core, push into the palms of the hands and inhale to lift up and lengthen. So we'll bring the hands forward now. We're going to make an all fours position. It doesn't matter if the pillow's there. We want the knees hip width apart, the wrists directly underneath the shoulders. Exhale to turn the toes under, draw the tummy button in, push from the space in the lower back and gently curve up through the spine. Just hold that position, but not the breath. Rest on the tops of the feet and inhale to lift the chest forward. Allow the release in the lower back. Exhale, roll up through the spine. Big noisy breath. Inhale, rest on the tops of the feet and bring the chest forward. So we're rolling through the spine. Exhale, roll up. Inhale, lift the chest forward. Then release back to a neutral spine position. So while it's in a nice accessible position, let's now bring the bolster just in front of the shoulders. So we're going to place it wide this time. Place the hands either side of the um, pillow or the bolster. And we're just going to gently lower the thighs, the belly, and then rest the chest, the neck, onto the bolster. I find it more comfortable because the bolster is a little firmer to bring the arms up and over. And we're just going to nod the chin here onto the bolster, onto the pillow. And you might just notice there's a little more release happening right at the base of the spine. Allowing the hips to widen, the thighs to soften to the floor. So this is almost like doing a very comfortable sphinx pose without having to hold the body up. I can feel it now coming into the middle back as the tension in my spine starts to let go and be a little more trusting of that natural curve in the spine. Now reposition the hands again, just enough to lift yourself up and roll or push that pillow away. Bring the forearms to the mat and let your forehead rest to the floor. Soften the buttocks, then draw the right heel in towards the bottom. Use the right hand to grab hold of that elbow. It's elbow, why did I say that? Ankle even. Push the thigh into the mat, push the hip flexor into the mat. You can press your upper body weight against the opposite forearm as you lift the chest. Nice. Now replace that right foot to the floor. We'll do exactly the same maneuver on the left. So opposite heel in, hand to the ankle, push the front of the ankle into the hand, lift the chest, 
And we'll just get a nice stretch through the farm. Then replace that foot to the floor. Let's take both hands either side of the chest, press down into the palms, lengthen back, and take a long stretch here. Then inhale to come back up into your all fours position. Turn the toes under, big noisy exhale into cat stretch. A nice fluid inhale into the cow pose. Exhale once more, cat stretch. Then return to a neutral spine, all fours position. So time now to just slide that pillow back. This time we're gonna use the pillow again so that it's kind of um, running parallel along the mat, portrait rather than landscape. And I'm going to now slide, it'd be easy for you to see actually because I'm on the right side. I'm going to slide the right shin forward. I'm resting on the right shin and I'm just letting the left hip come fully onto the pillow or the bolster. Lovely. Just if you flatten the back foot, so don't turn the back toe under. Nice. Just gives you more release in the hip. Then lower down onto the elbows. And you can feel this is a lot more controlled than it normally is when we do pigeon pose. We're very nicely supported here. We can feel that balance through the hips, through the shoulders. There's no need to feel as though we're leaning to more one side than the other. And it's just the gentle release of gravity that's allowing the hip to open and release a little more deeply. So because the pillow's taken us above the range that we would normally be, let's do two fists, one on top of the other, and then bring the forehead to rest here. Let the full weight of your head, your chest, your hip, your thigh, ease down into the floor beneath you. Enjoy that lovely release through the thigh, through the hip flexor. And bring the hands underneath the shoulders again. Inhale to lift up. Can you fold the heel in towards the bottom? Take hold of the ankle. Lovely. And just keep pressing that hip flexor forward into the thigh. So normally when we do pigeon pose, I would bring the opposite arm over. So on the other side, we might try that and see how that feels for balance. I just think sometimes when there's an obstacle in the way, it makes it feel a little harder. So let's lower that foot to the floor, both hands underneath the chest, turn the toe under, push the opposite foot back, come into plank, a little bit of energy, a little bit of strength. Then just using one hand, roll the bolster or the pillow over to the opposite side. I'm going to use it again. Then come back down, sliding the opposite shin forward and recreating that posture again. So bring the hip to rest onto the pillow. The um, shin rested on the floor. The back foot um, resting on the top of the back foot rather than the toe turned under. We started with the elbows on the floor just to get that release. So by comparison to the first hip we did, this hip feels a little tighter. It needs a little more time to just come into the space. On the other side, we did that two fists, brought the head to rest. And then it's all that weight, just that full release, allowing the front of your body to sink into the support beneath you. That just encourages a little more opening.
I could stay here forever. I love this one. Now reposition the hands under the shoulders. Take a moment to get your bearings and bring yourself back up. So we're going to try the way that we would traditionally do it in pigeon. So if you are bringing your left heel in, I don't know which foot you're on, oh, you're all on right. So if you're bringing your right heel in, bring the left hand to meet it. It just might be easier for balance. So the opposite hand to the opposite ankle. The hips remain square, the shoulders remain square. It can give you cramp in the feet. Get a there. Then gently replace that foot to the floor. And you know me, I like a little bit of plank whenever I come out of anything restful. Let's just push that pillow completely away now from underneath. Return back to your nice, strongly held plank position. Elbows soft. Straight diagonal line from the back of the head through to the um, back of the sit bones. Then lower down onto the knees, onto the chest, onto the chin. Elbows are drawn in. Bottom remains up in the air. Toes are turned under as you inhale to lift the chest forward. A much more joyful cobra because we've opened those hip flexors. Then release back into child's pose. Ears rested between the upper arms. Then lift yourself back up to an all fours position. So once more, we're going to reposition the pillow or the bolster. I'm going to pop it um, underneath where your shoulders are going to be. So allow enough space for your head. And we're just going to roll onto our backs. Bring the shoulders onto the mat. Don't let the head go. Just bring the hands behind the head. So use an interlock. Then rest the back of the head into the hands. So we're supporting the neck, we're opening the heart center. The weight of the elbows is helping to open through the side of the rib cage. And we're just allowing ourselves to again, rest a little more deeply into this space. I'm going to focus on an exhale so that the core is engaged, then an inhale to lift up, almost like a sit up. Then turn once more the orientation of your pillow. So the pillow will now come to be quite firmly into the small of the back. Then as you rest the upper body back, we can enjoy a deeper release heart opening, gentle spine releasing, the weight of your hands open to the side, breathing into any ears where you feel you're holding tension. And then with every exhale, giving yourself permission to let that tension go. Now this lovely restorative position is one that you can come into any time. You can hang around in it longer than I'm going to give us time for tonight. But remember this one, it's a nice one for calming anxiety and for opening, coming into your power, into your confidence. Now again, I'll remind you it's really key to engage the core. Just as we bring the hands either side of the body, sit ourselves back up. It's quite hard work. It's good. <laughs> so 
Take the pillow to the side. We're going to roll all the way back onto the mat. Then we're going to use the pillow underneath the hips. So the easiest way to get there is to bend the knees, bring the knees in line with the hips, insides of the feet parallel, push down into the soles of the feet, lift the bottom from the floor, then slide the pillow underneath that flat bone above the bottom. Good. Again, palms turned up towards the ceiling. We don't want to undo all that gorgeous heart opening we've already done. So for now, the knees are bent. We're not putting a lot of pressure on either the hip flexors or the lower back. We're just gonna take that opening a little bit deeper. So let's go one foot at a time so that we don't overload the system. Let's extend the right leg forward. Let the heel rest on the floor. Then let the toe become heavy and roll out to the right side. So we're conscious of opening a little more deeply into the inner thigh. You may feel it a little into the groin. We've safely lifted the hips. We're nicely supported. Again, it's all about allowing gravity to release and relax you here. And when you're ready, we'll simply slide that right knee back up. So knee is bent and extend the left leg forward. So we're resting on the heel, letting the left toe roll out. Sometimes this can feel a little niggly in the lower back. So just be aware of any messages being sent back. Does one side feel a little tighter than the other? Are you perhaps more resistant on one side to rolling the toe out and getting into that juicy space right at the top of the inner thigh? Now, rather than bending that foot back in, we're going to take the right leg forward so both heels rested on the floor, both toes rolled out, the thighs soft, the hips release, and the absolute magic of that letting go of tension in the lower back and keeping that heart open, the shoulders soft. As we said earlier, the heart is extended all the way down to the tips of the fingers. So once more, find your deep yogic breath, inhaling to the belly, the chest and the collarbones. Exhaling from the collarbones, the chest and the belly mass. If you enjoy the power of that Ujjayi breath, use it on the exhale. Now let's prepare to draw the feet a little closer together. We want to slide the feet back in. So we're coming back to that knee bend position, maintaining that hip width distance between the feet. Lift the bottom off the bolster off the pillow. So we need a little bit of strength of the thighs to lift us up here. Then slide that pillow out from underneath. Let's position the hands either side of the hips, resting the backs of the hands on the floor, palms turned up to the ceiling. Again, we're on the flats of the shoulder blades. Try to keep the knees tracking in line with the hips. Inhale to press the shins forward. Then as you exhale, start the space between the shoulder blades and slowly, gently start to roll down vertebra by vertebra. So don't rush this, don't cheat yourself of the benefits. 
of this really gentle, slow release. You'll get to a point where you think, surely that's the floor. And we've still got another couple of inches to just keep melding into. Let the full weight of your body sink into this space beneath you. Bring your focus back to the breath. Then on the next exhalation, hug the knees in towards the chest. Lovely. So I think I'm right in saying that we kind of push the pillow over to one side. So let's just find the pillow on our side, line it up from about the, I don't know, where would we say? Halfway, so halfway in the pillow should be where your hip is. Lower um, the same foot to the floor where the side, where your pillow is on that side, because I'm guessing it will all be on different sides. For me, it's my left, so I'm trying to be very careful not to define that. Then bring the opposite foot up and over. So we've got a pillow on one side, that knee is bent, the opposite knee is up and over, and the arms are wide to the side. On an out breath, travel that top knee over to rest on your pillow. Try to keep the arms wide, the shoulders stuck to the floor. And if this is giving you no discomfort in the lower back, then extend that bent knee and just come a little more into this twist. If the lower back is complaining, if the shoulder is lifting, just keep both knees gently bent. So I quite like to deepen the intensity of this stretch. If you wish, you can extend that top leg, push through the heel and just make that leg a little heavier so that you get a deeper stretch to the outside of the hip. If you feel that you're getting enough intensity where you are, then don't push it any further. So the head is looking over the opposite arm to whichever leg is extended or bent. Now quite easily, just come and bend that knee back in again. Can we just bend both knees so that these knees are stacked one on top of the other? Take hold of your pillow, roll over your body to the opposite side. Then take the knees, both knees over to that side. So again, we've got the hip halfway down the pillow. We're starting with that knee bent. We're bringing the opposite foot up and over, keeping the arms wide. Start with an easy release over. So we're just allowing, <laughs> we're just allowing the knee to rest on the pillow, on the bolster. Turning the head along the opposite arm, that will keep that opposite shoulder weighted away from the body. And then if you feel you want to increase the intensity, straighten that top leg and just let it rest so that we're um, extending the stretch to the side of the hip, to the side of the buttock, just letting the foot rest towards the floor. Nice work. Then as you exhale, draw the tummy button in. Important that we bend both of the knees so that the lower back is supported. Then roll the knees back towards centre. Let's hug both knees again in towards the chest.
a little rock from one side to the other. And I vowed that tonight would feel really um, releasing, really restorative. So I'm not going to do anything um, too uh, taxing. What I'd like to do is a happy baby, but I'm going to say that we keep the knees bent when we do this happy baby. So we'll grab hold of the toes, but there's no need to straighten the legs. Let's just keep them in this drawn in position. Imagine that you're a baby in the fetus, in the womb. And then just gently rock from one side to the other. Or you can go backwards and forwards if you like. Just watch what's going on at the back of your neck. Nice work. Then gently roll back towards centre. Hug those knees again in towards the chest. Replace the feet to the floor. Then roll over to whichever side is most comfortable for you. I'm going to invite you to come back to a seated position now. I'll remind you, you've got your pillow. So if it helps your hips to lift your bottom up off the floor, then do so. So as we've been fairly restorative throughout. Tonight, I'm not going to finish on a Shavasana, I'm going to finish on some breath work. Um, so that will leave us alert enough to be able to go to the door. And um, I'll just check the time. It is 54. So I have three minutes. <laughs> and I will, I'll make sure that I do my three minutes. So I'm going to take the glasses off because I find it more comfortable. Just rub the palms in front of the heart. So we mentioned earlier that all that heart energy all the way down to the tips of the fingers, warm. Now take the palms of the hands and just rest them over the heart. Take a moment to close the eyes. Take a deep breath in and fill your heart with positive energy. Exhale and feel that positive energy expand to surround you. Deep breath in, expand into the heart. On the out breath, feel that expansion completely surround you. You can keep the eyes closed, but we'll reposition the hands onto the belly. So again, one palm rested gently on top of the other. Return to that deep yogic breath, inhaling to the belly, the chest and the collarbones. Exhaling from the collarbones, the chest, and the belly laps. Another deep breath in to expand. And exhale to release any tension. A full deep inhalation. Then an exhale to let go any negativity. Good. So I'm conscious that I muted you all at the start of the session. Um, so you might be desperate to use your voice. And the good thing is you can use your voice without anyone else hearing you. So once more, we're going to rub the hands in front of the heart. We'll keep the eyes closed. In a moment, we will bring the palms over the eyes, which are closed. And we'll use the thumbs to gently close the ears. So gentle pressure onto the tragus. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, release that breath with a hum. Oh. 
Complete one further round. Then gently blink the eyes open behind the palms. Separate the fingers to allow a little light in. Then take pleasure in touching your face. Draw the fingers down along the contours of your face. Feel that love from your heart. Bring the hands to an Anjali Mudra. Touch to the head for kind thoughts, to the lips for kind words, and to the heart for kind intentions. The light in me honours the light in you. Namaste. Namaste. Two minutes to. <laughs> I did not bad. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone.